Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-Azim Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Shafiina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa Barik wa Sallim wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in Amma ba'd Faqad qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi al-kareem Ma'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ مِشَيِّمْ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين ومن الشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Indeed all praises are for Allah and it is the duty of every believer to send hamd and praise to Allah, to glorify Allah, to whisper and to sing the tasbih of Allah. As a matter of fact, the entire makhlukat of Allah, all the created beings of Allah, the creations in regards to the haywanat, the animal world, the insect world, the world of the fishes, they all send tasbih and glorify Allah. Allah tells us in the Quran, "Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fil aud." That every single thing in the heavens and the earth does tasbih to Allah, glorify Allah. The Quran says, "But mankind, we can't understand their tasbih." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He is that one who has sent His Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The last, the final, the seal of the prophets Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To teach mankind about life and about death To teach us about what is present in this world And what lies beyond To teach mankind to answer three questions That is going to come when we close our eyes On the face of this earth and we go into a hole all alone. Marabuka, Madinuka, Mada Takula and Hada Rajal. What is your way of life? Who is your Lord first and foremost? What is your way of life? And what do you say about this man? Who is your Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Three questions that's going to come on the day of on the day when we will be lying in the bowels of the earth. Three questions that will come that will give problems to insan. Even though we already know these questions. Even though we know the questions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us life. Allah has given us life. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has given us life. In other words, he has placed meaning to that life. Because life without knowing Allah, life without obedience to Allah, obedience is Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following the way of Islam, I ask myself and I ask you, what kind of life is that? The Quran for itself speaks about those people who Allah has given life to, but they fail to recognize Allah. They fail to recognize the truth of Al Quran. They fail to recognize the deen of Allah. They fail to recognize the best of Allah's creation, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah says they are they are on dalala. They are on misguidance. They are like animals. They are like cattle. As a matter of fact, they are even worse off than cattle. These are not my words. These are the words of Allah. So we testify to his oneness and we send praise to him and we testify to the last messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is time like these, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, on these occasions, on these days, the day of Yawmul Jum'ah, it is a day of festivity, it is a day of zikr, it is a day of reminder, it is a day of dua, it is the most special day to Allah. Most special. It is a day when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, 
akfiru do it in abundance akfiru fi salamatikum in regards to your samat alayya in regards to sending darud upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam today moist our tongues in counting how much darud did we send to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa barik wa sallam man salla alayya wahida that one who will send one to me says the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu alayhi ashran allah will send ten to him it is a bargain on yawmul juma it is a day for bargaining it is a day for trade trade for our akhirat trade for our akhirat who wants to go into a business on yawmul juma as a matter of fact the day for the believer we keep looking at the time whether we are students whether we are teachers whether we are businessmen whatever it is that we are engaged in we keep looking at the time the believer because he knows that they have to present themselves in the house of of Allah we don't want to get too engrossed in any kind of work today that will take us away from Allah but we want to get engrossed in the zikr of Allah and sending the rood upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam today is the day for that but my my dear brothers my dear sisters these eyes that Allah has given to us sometimes these eyes they cast glance Sometimes the heart becomes in a state of ghaflat and negligence. And this is why we constantly need the reminder. And alhamdulillah the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that this nation, this nation my ummah, we were the last we were the last to come on the face of the earth, but we will be the first on the day of qiyamah. We were given the last choice of choosing the day we chose friday all the other nations chose before we chose friday alhamdulillah allah says in friday it is the greatest day the greatest of all days these eyes becomes this become distracted at times because allah has created mankind and allah has created certain things for the benefit of mankind things that will bring pleasure to us things that will bring happiness to us things that will bring joy and delight and peace to us things that will give us comfort allah has created us like that wasn't adam alayhi salam dwelling in jannah what was there that he was missing everything was present in jannah but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to fall into sleep allah took his rib off one of the rib and allah created for him a spouse allah created him for him a spouse we all need wives we need women in our lives pure and chaste we need women to make our lives peaceful when i say women i mean wives let us clear that up wives because they are legal for us they are lawful for us and true nikah to the institution of nikah marriage allah has blessed a man and a woman because every time they touch every time they smile at each other every time that their lips meet each other every intimate moment that they share the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says it continues to give them rewards rewards but sometimes the very same thing that allah has created for us in regards to delights and comforts whether it be wives whether it be children whether it be our wealth whether it be our jobs whether it be our transportation whether it be our homes whatever it is that we hold near and dear and we enjoy sometimes these things can do two things to us it can either bring us closer to allah in regards to benefiting in the hereafter or it can become a distraction for us and take us away from allah the quran tells us a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim zuyyina lin nasi hubbu shahawat beautified for mankind beautified for mankind 
is the love of the things that they desire. Their desires, their passions. It has made beautiful in their eyes. From amongst those things, Allah says, Mina Nisa Banina. From amongst the women, from amongst the children, from the gold and the silver. In other words, the wealth. In those days were dirhams and dinars. In our time, it's paper, it's money. Paper, we call it. Paper money. Wealth. وَالْقَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَوْثِ Beautiful horses, branded horses, beautiful cattle to till the land. All these things have made beautiful in the eyes of mankind. Allah says women first. Allah says children second. Allah says our wealth third. Allah says branded horses, beautiful horses. Meaning transportation in our days, nobody takes a horse to go down the road. Everybody looking for Rolls Royce and Mercedes Benz and the beautiful things that we have in regards to transport. Bad tires and bad rims and bad music and all the bad things we call them. What beautify our eyes or what seems beautiful in our eyes. The cattle that we use to plow the land. In other words, our businesses, whatever type of business. All these things, they are things that brings beauty, relaxation, comfort in some way or the other to insan. But these things, anytime, anytime they distract a man from his sole purpose on the face of the earth, then these things are going, to co they are going to be the reason for his destruction and the punishment of Allah. These are the things that Allah has given to us to make our lives here comfortable, easy, peaceful, and to understand that they didn't come through us, but they come or they came through Allah. And because we will recognize that, it will cause insan to recognize his link with Allah so that insan will become grateful to Allah now. And he will use all these assets, all these different gifts and favors that Allah would have bestowed upon him to make his akhirat better. That is what it is. Maulana Rumi, Jalaluddin Rumi, subhanAllah, he says, that the things of this world, the things of this world with which we surround ourselves, it is like water. And he's describing all these things that I've just mentioned. Women, children, wealth, transportation, the money, the gold, the silver, the businesses, all these things. He says these are the things of the world which we, we, we surround ourselves by them. They surround us. And he says also, all these things, they represent water. All these things, they are like water. And the heart of man, the heart of insan, is like a boat in the water. He says, as long as the water remains beneath and around the boat, then it will be good and it will be helpful and it will certainly serve the purpose for the boats. But, however, if that water gets into the boat, then it will cause the boat to sink and it will destroy every single thing that is in it. Everything that Allah has given to us is like water. The heart is the boat. As long as all these things we understand that they are a means that Allah has given to us to gain closeness to Him, then it will become beneficial for us. But anytime we allow the dunya, we allow the wealth, 
We allow the woman. We allow the children. We allow the business. We allow everything that Allah has given to us to get into this heart and divert our attention from the remembrance of Allah. Then we are going to sink. We are going to drown. The very said blessing, the very said ni'mat is going to become and it's going to become something that will destroy us. The favors that Allah has given to us will become our destruction now. And this is what the Quran is telling us when Allah says, Thalika mata'ul hayat dunya All those things that Allah has given to us, that it is only mata. It is only a thing for the life of this world. Wallahu innahu husnul ma'ab. And with Allah lies the most excellent reward. So if we use them properly, if we use them properly, then we will attain the most excellent reward from Allah. So let us not become deceived because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, مَا يَزَالُ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُؤْمِنُ وَالْمُؤْمِنَةٍ He says that a believing man, a believing woman, continues to remain under trials and afflictions. فِي نَفْسِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ وَمَالِهِ حَتَّى يَلْقَ اللَّهِ وَمَا عَلَيْهِ قَطِيعَةٌ Subhanallah. This man who is a believer, this woman who is a believer, they are surrounded with trials and tribulations. Every single bounty of Allah is a trial for us. With the car that we come to the masjid with, it is a trial for us. How do we utilize that car? What do we do with that car? It is a trial for us. The water that we drink, how we appreciate that water, it is a trial for us. The Quran tells us that on that big day, on that big day, every single man will be asked about the ni'mat and the bounties that Allah had bestowed upon him. The business that Allah has given to us, it is a trial for us. The wives that we have, the children that we have, they are trials unto us. Every single thing. So the believer, the man, the woman, surrounded by trials and affliction, firstly in regards to ourselves. Allah tries us in regards to ourselves first. What kind of trials we go through? We know. We know. Whether it be trials of the eyes that we see walking in front of us all the time. Skirt flying this side, skirt flying that side. And our heads like this and like that, like if we're praying. And we just come out of Salat. Salam on this side, Salam on that side. That is a trial. We are in sun. We are human beings. It happens to the best of us. We live in the real world. We are not angels. Allah knows exactly what kind of test and trial he has placed for insan. And the Prophet ﷺ says, There is no greater trial, no greater affliction, no greater fitna for a man. Except for what? Nisa. A woman. And Nisa uhaba ilu shaitan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, they are the ropes or the nets of shaitan. When a fisherman throws his net, he's hoping to catch something. That is what they do. They catch us by what they wear, by the way they speak, by how they look at you. They catch us and we fall into the trap. We fall into the trap. It is a test and it is a trial. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that for the believer, men, woman, don't think that it's not the same thing for a woman. If you're handsome like some of us here, you can't get away from the grasp of the eyes of a woman. They're watching you from head to toe. Yusuf alayhi salam is our example. Zulaika was the king's wife. He was a slave boy. She was who? The wife of the Aziz. 
But that kind of beauty that he possessed, she started to make passes at him. She started to throw glances at him. She's the one who tried to grab him. So it have ladies, it have sisters like that in our times too. So brothers, don't feel that it's only for women. No. It is for them and it is for us too. The trials, it's going to come to us. And the first one, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying in regards to ourselves. What we look at, that is one. What we listen to, that is a trial. That is a trial, what we listen to. What we speak. What we say. Remember this, there's only one morsel of flesh between 32, 32 teeth in our mouth. 32 teeth in our mouth. One morsel of flesh that it takes 32 pieces of stone to block it. 32 pieces of stone to block one morsel of flesh. If we keep it closed, you know, you can't make a sound. You don't say nothing bad. So much guard and protection for that one thing. Subhanallah. Abu, you're laughing? So much protection for that one thing. Because the moment we open it, the moment the burglar proof is removed, boom. Then we hear all the gossip, all the slander, all the backbiting, all the lying, all the defamation about this brother, this sister, this family, that family. It is a trial for ourselves. Allah is going to try us in regards to our children. Our children. In every single Muslim home today. In every single Muslim home today. The fitna of children arises. The trial of a child for his parents. The trial of a son or a daughter or children for their children, it pops up every single day. These are live issues. We can't and we don't sweep it under the carpet. We have to deal with it. Because we are in sun. We are human beings. And it happens. But we don't stop there. We take it with sabr. We take it with patience. And we hope for the best results. The trial of our wealth. When we have to spend in the part of Allah. When we have to give to the masjid. When we have to give for something in the house of Allah. When we have to help a poor and a needy. When we have to help a sick. When we have to help someone in a living situation. Whatever it might be. Some, something to eat. We find it difficult in regards to spending. In regards to giving. We think as though it's going to de decrease our, our, our wealth. We think that the more we give is the less we're going to have. And that is far from the truth. As a matter of fact, that's the opposite. We think that this wealth, we're going to keep it here forever. How much money did the Prophet ﷺ left when he passed? How much did he leave? Do you know the wealth of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha? She was richer than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam by far. As a matter of fact, he used to work for her. He used to work for her. One of the richest businesswomen of, of, in the times of Makkah amongst the Quraysh. When she died, what did she have? What did she leave behind? Nothing. Spent it all for this deen. What did Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala have? One of the wealthiest tajir, the wealthiest merchant in Makkah. Buy the slave, buy that slave, give this, give that, build this, build that. Without even thinking twice. When he died, what did he have? Absolutely nothing. What did they leave behind? What you and I inherit today. What you and I inherit today. And it is a, there is a lesson in it. That we too, whatever we have. It's going to stay right here. It's going to stay right here. One, one brother, just last week I made a visit to him. Subhanallah. He says, Imam, just by the way, this is a sidetrack. He wasn't so well. Visited this brother. He says, there was once upon a time in my life, 
A brother came from India. They were collecting some donations to build a masjid. Nowadays, people become very skeptical because people come from all different places without any kind of proofs of what they're really doing and we question and we ask and all kind of different things. At, at the first, he says, I was hesitant. But then, I gave. I wrote a check for him and I gave it. He said, this brother, he looked at me and he said, Bhai sahab, or kuch de de na, bhai. He says, give a little more. Give a little more. And see what Allah will bring back for you. He says, there's an ayat in the Quran where Allah says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةِ He says the similitude of those who spend in the part of Allah is the similitude of a corn grain. أَمْبَتَتْ سَبَأَ سَنَابِلْ He says you take that one corn grain and you plant it in the ground and it will grow and it will bring forth seven ears of corn. He says in every single corn, you will see 100 grains coming out. 100 grains coming out. This brother, he says, Imam, not that I don't believe in the words of Allah, but I put this ayat to the test. I put this ayat to the test. He says, by Allah, I for myself built the masjid in India. And now, he says, Imam, my barrel is never empty. This is a live example. A live example. Everybody who put their head in that masjid. Everybody who made, made wudu. You know how much people in India, right? We don't have to go so far if we can't. All it takes is one dollar. And he said that to me. He says it's not, the, it's not the amount I spend. He says because you, you can give just one piece of date and that could outweigh everything that I had given. Because that was all you could have given. I could have given more. But that was all you had. Don't think about the amount. It's not the amount that Allah wants. Allahu Akbar, Allah wants the ikhlas from you. So three things the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says Allah is going to test the believers. It's going to be a trial and affliction to the believer, man or woman, in regards to himself, in regards to his children, and in regards to his wealth. Allah is going to test him so much that Alhamdulillah, if he passes these tests, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Yalqallah wa ma alayhi khati'atun. He will meet Allah on the day of Qiyamah and there will not be a sin upon him. Allah will take away all his sins from him. For every single test and trial that he passed in regards to himself, in regards to his children, and in regards to his wealth. Every test that he is put through and he passes it, Allah is wiping away, wiping away, wiping away until he will meet Allah on the day of Qiyamah and he won't have anything on his book in regards to sins. Allahu Akbar. Eh? Mr. Walker, you would love that. Eh? Who wouldn't like it? All of us would like it. So when the test and the trials come, when the test and the trials come, remember, Allah have us where he wants us. Allah Send that to us. And when we surrender to him, he is the one who is going to lift us up from it. And that is what it is. It is Allah. Only Allah. Nobody else. Remember, whatever problems, whatever trials and afflictions touches anyone, it only happens through the permission of Allah. A man doesn't only be in a state of want because he doesn't have no work. No. It is because Allah has him there. 
And the more he continues to thank Allah, the more he continues to praise Allah, the more he continues to glorify Allah. Allah is not the one who does not listen. He is the one who is listening. And he loves to hear the voice of the believer. He loves that. One Sahabi, he goes and he's making dua every single day. He's making dua. He is tested with trials and tribulations. So much poverty, not enough food to feed himself, his wife, his children. He don't have enough food, nothing to do, no work, no nothing. And he's making dua to Allah. And he's crying before Allah. Subhanallah. The malaika who is listening to this man because they are recording every action that we do. Ya Rabbi. They are interceding on his behalf. Oh my Allah. Oh Allah, you know best. But this servant of yours. Look how he is weeping. Look how he is crying. Look how he is pouring out his heart to you. Look at the situation he is in. Oh Allah, you are not accepting his dua. Allah addresses his angels. Oh my angels. Inni alamu ma la ta'lamun. I know what you do not know. This man, he gives me mazah. This man, he makes me happy. This man, I am happy with him. I am happy in hearing his voice. The day that I answers his dua. The day I give him what he wants. The day I will bestow on him what he's asking for. This man is going to turn away from me. He's not going to cry before me again. He's not going to open his mouth to me again. He's not going to thank me again. I love what he's doing to me. For me, I am going to elevate him. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Allah have your back. And he has minds too. Don't ever feel despaired. Don't lose hope. Allah have us right where he wants us. We wouldn't be anywhere else had it not been for the order and the permission of Allah. Sometimes we say, if I had done this, and if I had done that, and if I did go here, and if I did go there, and if I did do it so, and if I did do it like that, kalimat shaitan if, is the kalimah of shaitan. It is Allah who is doing for the believer. Allah. And Allah will do for us how he wants to do for us. Every single Nabi, every single Nabi went through hardships and trials. Who am I? Who are you? We will have to face it. So remember in regards to ourselves, in regards to our children, in regards to our wealth, Allah is going to keep testing us. Inshallah, beg Allah to give us what it takes to pass these tests. Because every single one of these tests and trials, it will remove our sins and it will take us to a place, such a place where Allah will raise us without any sins at all. Who wouldn't like that? Everybody would like that. May Allah show us truth as truth. May he show us falsehood as falsehood. We beg Allah to guide us on the path of Al-Haqq. Wal-Akhir Dawana. And Alhamdulillah. Ya Rabbil Alameen.